Hello and welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Stephen. Thank you so much for joining me as we continue the progress on rebuilding the 2017 Ford Police Interceptor Utility, the police version of the Explorer here that I've been working on now for a few months. Today I'm excited because today I hope to get the face back on my interceptor. Basically, I need to put the front end together. You can see I've got the grill kind of on there, but I don't have the bumpers or anything else. So today, in preparation for taking the car uh, for an appointment here uh, very soon, I need to get the front end put together. Got an appointment for an alignment and air conditioning recharge, all in preparation for a trip I've got coming up very soon. So today we're gonna go ahead and hop on building up the front end. Uh, that is gonna require taking a few things apart first. Uh, things come apart before they go back together. But go ahead and wish me luck, let's get started. All right, this is my second attempt trying to record this segment because I just got three quarters of the way through it and realized my camera was on time-lapse mode. So let's see if I can get through this again. What I was trying to tell you is, uh, here as I get ready to put the front end on, one of the things that was holding me up in doing this in the first place uh, is that I've been waiting for some parts. Now I had a check engine light and some errors because of ultimately this little guy right here, uh, which is an ambient air temperature sensor. Um, the ambient air temperature sensor uh, is responsible for putting, of course, the outside air temperature on the display in the dash, but it does more than that. It also feeds that information to the engine control computers and uh, something to do with the HVAC and the, the air conditioning system and all that. So I went ahead and ordered it up when I realized that my check engine light uh, codes were for this. It's only nine bucks, so I got that and uh, had a little trouble figuring out where it goes, but thanks to some help from some folks online, I was able to get that figured out. It actually attaches to the back of the grill, uh, but then I could not figure out where this little jack plugs in. Um, I searched all over looking for something that wasn't plugged in, couldn't figure it out. Uh, the only thing I could find that wasn't plugged in, didn't know what it was for, but it was way too big for this, and uh, did a little more research, come to find out, well, I was actually missing an entire harness, this harness right here. See, when this thing was wrecked, they did a partial teardown on it, and I got a lot of parts with this thing, but I didn't get everything. Uh, and one of the things I didn't get was this harness right here. Now, mine being a police interceptor is a pretty basic version of the Explorer. On the fancier versions that have front parking sensors and all that, uh, that would be built into this harness as well. But this one being uh, a pretty basic one, this harness is just for this little sensor right here. Uh, it, is, it installs on the back of the grill and the um, bumper. And so uh, when they dismantled this thing, they took this with it and uh, so I did not get it. Anyway, I've plugged this in and tested it and everything works, it took care of my problem. Uh, so now I'm ready to go ahead and start building up the bumper. But the bumper on this thing is very complex. There's a lot of parts to it. Um, I don't know, for those of you who are longtime subscribers and you remember when I rebuilt the Fusion, the first car I rebuilt uh, a while back, almost two years ago actually, uh, that bumper was very simple. There was the main bumper, I think the grill attached to it, and then I added some fog lights to it. That's all there was to it, very, very simple. Uh, this bumper has all sorts of extra little pieces and stuff, and of course the grills and yada, yada, yada. There's so many parts to this thing, so I'm gonna have to build the whole thing off of the vehicle um, and then try to install it on the vehicle. So that's what I'm gonna get started with. Wish me luck as I get going so that I can figure out where everything goes and hopefully by the time I'm done, the interceptor will have its face back. Let's get going. then so I think I've got everything unboxed and more or less figured out here got the two largest pieces of uh, the bumper over here this is of course the body color portion uh, that has the fog lights actually this vehicle doesn't have fog lights but it's where the fog lights would go where the blanks will go uh, this is a lower portion of the bumper as well 
Over here, I've got a variety of smaller parts. This is the energy absorbing uh, plastic piece. Uh, this is the fog light blanks, a few other odds and ends in there. And then over here, I've got the wiring harness we talked about earlier, as well as a few other odds and ends, bolts, screws, so on and so forth. So now I get the fun job of uh, putting the puzzle together and uh, hopefully not damaging anything, in particular, that fresh paint over there. So go ahead and wish me luck and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty guys, I stopped the video for a little while because I was dealing with something that I wanted to figure out and uh, there was no need for you to watch a time lapse while I was trying to figure it out. Uh, what I was trying to figure out was this little piece right here. Uh, it's just a foam, I guess an air dam if you will. Uh, it just helps direct the air um, where it's supposed to go. And uh, it was super awkward trying to figure this out. Um, so just in case you happen to be rebuilding one of these, little tip for you. Uh, first of all, you do have to take the crash bar off. Um, you can't really see it very well, but you'll have to feed it around the air conditioning lines on this side. There's a push pin, like one of those Christmas tree push pins, uh, two on each side. And then the part that was really confusing was what happens to the piece that connects the two. And ultimately, it just, you can't really see it very well, feeds up here underneath uh, the core support and has a little bit of sticky that attaches to the top of the radiator. You can't see that. Um, so if you happen to be working on one of these of your own, there you go. That's how that's supposed to work. Uh, over here, I have uh, pretty much built up the... Uh, well, the bumper and grill area um, and all the pieces that go on that. There are a couple little pieces that go here on the ends that I haven't figured out yet. I think I'm going to try to get this on the interceptor and then figure it out. And ultimately, it's not that big a deal if that waits anyway. So Erica's here now and she's going to help me uh, get this thing hung on the interceptor. And uh, theoretically, in just a few moments, the interceptor will have its face back again. Excited to see that because I've literally never seen this thing with a full front end. So I'm going to set you guys back up on time lapse and uh, we're going to go ahead and put this thing on. Wish us luck. Well, the bumper's kind of hanging there, but it's kind of got a fat lip at the moment. Uh, as you can see, uh, my brackets here aren't uh, able to go all the way in. Uh, and I think what I've probably done, and I've probably reversed the sides, and I think this actually has to flip the other way around uh, and probably go on the other side. So, going to have to take the bumper back off, take my rivets out. Uh, thankfully, I have spare rivets, and uh, we'll try this all again. So... You guys go back to time lapse, let's get it fixed. All 
All right, guys, just so you have an opportunity to learn from my mistakes, again, if you're ever putting one of these together, uh, the bracket actually goes on the underside of the bumper, and uh, I had them reversed. Um, so this comes up from the bottom, but actually if you come over here and look at where it attaches uh, to the fender, super dark so it's hard to see, uh, but there are places where uh, these pegs and this clip uh, kind of go into the bottom of the fender anyway. So uh, it makes sense in hindsight, but hey, I made a mistake. So learn from my mistake. Let's go ahead and get this thing hung now for real. Go ahead and peel it. Oh, yeah. Alrighty, folks. Well, there is the interceptor with a face. Again, it looks awesome. Well, I mean, it's dirty, but <laughs> it looks so much better. I have very little light here, so it's hard to show you, but there you go. It's looking much better. Now, I am far from done, and I'm not going to wrap this video up here because I have other things I'd like to include. But I had to get this kind of wrapped up because, like I said at the beginning of the video, need to get it to the shop tomorrow. Got an appointment to get an alignment and get the air conditioning recharged. So she is good to go for a little bit of a road trip, and uh, we'll pick this video up after her appointment. See you then. And we're back. All right, it is another day, and the interceptor is back from the shop. I did get the alignment taken care of, and they've recharged the air conditioning system. Uh, so I got a couple of things off the uh, checklist that needed to be taken care of. And actually, it's been a couple of days, and I brought it over here briefly and took care of one little thing that needed to be done, uh, which was I was missing a little piece of wiring harness. Now, that little turn signal wiring harness is normally sold as part of the entire harness uh, from the engine bay, uh, and obviously, I wasn't going to replace that whole thing and uh, couldn't find it separately. It's just about a 12-inch thing that goes uh, plugs into a jack on the engine harness and then goes uh, into the turn signal, and the one from the passenger side was missing. Of course, that's the side of the main wreck. That headlight was obliterated and that one was missing. Uh, since I couldn't find it, I went ahead and got some pigtails, made my own. Here's a little bit of video uh, showing me making that yesterday. Um, no big deal. That's all taken care of. Now, I am just a few days away from when I'm supposed to be leaving on about a thousand mile round trip, um, road trip to visit family, and the Interceptor is my plan. A rental is, of course, a backup, but I want to take this on a road trip, but I don't want to do it in a way that's going to be unsafe. So I've just got a little bit of time to get this thing ready to go, and uh, that is kind of my plan for today to take care of some of those items. I've got a few more days, but I want to take care of a few of those things. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm going to start with first. All right, some of you may have noticed in some of my previous videos that when I uh, turn the vehicle on, I get 
I get an error message pretty quickly right off the bat. We shut the driver's door, see manual, then uh, ABS traction control lights come on, hill start assist, not available, service advanced track. And of course it ding, ding, dings quite a bit of time. Now that does not keep me from driving it. In fact, I've put over hundred miles on this thing so far, um, but I don't want to have ABS and traction control issues if I'm gonna take it on a long cross country. So, so as best as I can tell, the problem actually is um, the wheel speed sensor over on the front passenger side. Again, that's the side that took uh, the brunt of the impact. Don't know exactly what happened over there because as far as I can tell, there's no suspension damage and uh, they didn't note any problems when they did the alignment. But nonetheless, um, I have looked at it uh, with a code reader and it does appear to be that speed sensor. So it's only a $27, $29 part. Went ahead and got a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that replaced. That's my next thing. And then there's a few other odds and ends. I'm kind of short for time right now. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put you guys on a time lapse. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of pausing and explaining. I might do some voiceover uh, to explain what I'm working on, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get to work. I've already got the quick jack set up underneath the interceptor. I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up, get to work on that speed sensor, and then get to work on some other things. Uh, so wish me luck and let's keep going. Alrighty guys, so I'm sitting here editing this video and I realized I never explained what's going on. Went straight from replacing that wheel speed sensor, uh, tested it, you saw that that didn't actually fix the problem and now I'm working on the steering wheel. So what in the world gives? So here's what happened. I replaced the wheel speed sensor, but the uh, obviously you saw all the errors still came on. But when I checked the computer for codes, actually the error for the wheel speed sensor had gone away. But I started digging a little bit deeper into the codes and I found out that something about the restraint system was triggering the errors with a uh, hill start ascent, traction control, uh, stability track, all that. I thought that was really, really weird and I still cannot tell you why anything uh, about the restraint system should have an effect on um, stability track, but for whatever reason, that's what the computer seemed to be indicating. So I went ahead and thought it's probably time to go ahead and finish off uh, this airbag system. I needed to put the driver's steering wheel airbag in, which is what I'm getting ready to do here. Um, and of course the uh, airbag module, and there's also a little, um, another one of those little pyrotechnic things, part of the SRS system that's built into the steering column. Uh, that had deployed on my car as well, so I had to replace that. So I'm gonna let you jump back into the video. We'll pick up right where we left off. You'll see me doing all that. There's also a special little clip about the steering wheel, which I don't actually explain in this video. I'm sorry, but I will explain it in the next video. So let's get back into it. Alrighty folks, I have replaced the steering wheel, more about that later, and I've got the new airbag in. I have changed out the uh, steering column, uh, little pyrotechnic thing, I don't even know what it's there for, but there's one in the steering column, part of the SRS system, so I've changed that. I have reinstalled my airbag module here. So, 
last thing to do here is go ahead and hook the battery back up <laughs> and see what uh, we've cleared. Let's see what happens here. Alrighty, here we go. <laughs> Pray that this airbag doesn't go off in my face. Back up a little bit. Alright, well the airbag didn't go off, that's a good sign. Let's see here. Alright. Well, the good news is we don't have any more error messages about advance track. And fortunate news is, do you still have an airbag light? So, well, that's mixed news. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a little research, see if I can figure anything out. Maybe I've overlooked something. Alrighty, guys and gals, we're gonna try this again. Ignition on. And we'll go ahead and start it. Well, would you look at that. Would you look at that, guys? We have no errors for advanced track. We have no airbag light. And, uh, well, we have the seatbelt light because I don't have that on and I've got the brake par uh, parking brake set. So we are in good shape. Uh, just so you know what I did, uh, obviously I had uh, the um, airbag module reset by uh, Safety Restore, just as I had uh, the seatbelts fixed by them and all that. Uh, but, uh, of course you saw that the light still came on. Um, I have four scan running on a little computer over there. I hooked that up and uh, for whatever reason, uh, maybe there's another module that stores crash data, I don't know. Uh, but for whatever reason, it still showed crash data, but four scan allowed me to reset that. And now, as you can see, we have absolutely no error codes whatsoever. We are in excellent shape and I cannot tell you how excited I am because now there's just a few odds and ends, well, quite a few odds and ends, but now it's just a matter of finishing putting things together and I can actually take this thing on a road trip. All right, guys, that is where I'm gonna wrap this video up. As you can see behind my shoulder there, it is dark, it is late, been working for a while. I'm excited because we made some extremely good progress today and it's so much closer to being ready to go on a road trip. But I'm gonna stop this video here because I don't want it to get too crazy long. So the next video will pick up uh, seeing if I can finish getting this thing ready for a road trip. And with those codes cleared and everything looking mechanically good now, I think we're much closer. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, why don't you go ahead and do that now and then click the bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new episode so you can stay up to date on what I'm doing here with the Interceptor and with future projects, of course, coming up. If for no other reason, go ahead and subscribe so you can see if this thing will make its first long trip after being rebuilt coming up very, very soon. If you're not already, go ahead and follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'll have links in the description below. You can follow me there where I'll post pictures and videos occasionally, uh, keeping you up to date on the things that I'm doing, even in between videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're excited. Drop a like on this video, and we'll see you in the next one.